Hey guys, what's going on? Thanks for swinging by. I sure do appreciate it. If you're new to the channel, my name is Mark. This is Clay. Welcome to Fit and Fire, man. We're going to be talking about a whole bunch of NATO AKs. Is that the best way to describe it, you say? I should say not, a lot of these were not adopted by NATO because you'll get meanie butts in the nah, comments. That's a good point. That's a good Slang point. term, 5.56 five, AKs, NATO There you case. go. Yep, there we go. And one of the things that uh, Clay and I wanted to do is talk about kind of like our favorite 5.56 five, AKs, uh, talk about some that you can find on the market, some that may be a little bit more difficult to find, but uh, realistically, if you've got the money, you could probably find one of these out on the market today. And, uh, and if you have a lot of money, <laughs> yeah, you can find some yeah, others. Yes, <laughs> that is right. If you guys don't know, Clayco47 here uh, is probably one of the coolest AK guys that I know. Uh, there's a lot of great guys out there, but uh, if you want to learn how to shoot an AK, shoot an AK fast, this is the guy on the interwebs that you should be looking at. Uh, we met up on Grinder, and uh, it's been it's been great ever since. But uh, um, so I appreciate, <laughs> appreciate him. <laughs> so um, I brought three of my rifles. Clay's got three of his favorite rifles, and I. Th figured that we just go ahead and start with your favorites and uh, and go from there and then we can switch over and talk about my favorites and uh, yeah so w w what's first on the deck first of all bro thanks for having me no <laughs> and uh, should we tell the people that in order to uh, see all of the guns this is going to be a two-part series that's a great point yes yes so we are going to do uh, Clay's three favorite on my channel and then we're going to flip over onto Clay's channel and do my three favorite and uh, kind of help cross-pollinate our our uh, subscribers. That would be a lot of fun. I think our subs would like each other. Yes. I mean, obviously, I we like. I watch all your videos. I watch all so, your videos. Uh, I think our subs would like each other. See, there you go. Uh, so I brought my three favorite 5.56 five, AKs of all time. I have more than this, but these three are so different from one another, from mm. three completely different countries. Uh, some are impossible to get. Some you can still buy right now. Yeah. But uh, these are my three, man. I figured your viewers would like to see something different. Yeah. And the cool thing is these are these are going to be three rifles that I've never shot before. So that's another cool aspect of it. Uh, why don't we start with this one? Kind of new. I think these have only been sold for maybe a year, a year and a half mm -hmm. now. Yep. This is a Zestava M90. Uh, you can actually buy one of these years ago. These were coming in in parts kits. I don't know the actual Serbian name for it, but uh, for a little while you could buy an M90 with a bayonet lug and an underfolder in a parts kit, but that was virtually the only way you could get any 5.56 Zestava in a rifle config. You know, they've had the M85 pistols, yep. as you've shown on your channel. Yep. Uh, finally, the rifle came in. Uh, not too long ago, we had the uh, M90 MPs that took the AR-15 mags. Right, yeah. And people always really just wanted a rock and lock, true to form Zestava. Uh, 556 AK and what's interesting about this one it has a lot of forks uh, right off the bat you can tell it's a musket yeah. it's 18, 18 inches, inches long yeah. uh, the barrel is chrome lined uh, interestingly about Zestava they were chrome lining their 556 barrels way before their 762 by 39 mm -hmm. barrels yep. and you'll notice uh, this is very close to I believe it's called their uh, I don't believe it's the M77 although it might be but if you do look at M77s I want to say that's a seven millimeter maybe an eight millimeter uh, that's where you're going to see this tunable gas block. Mm. Interestingly, M90s have three gas settings, setting one, two, and three. Not necessarily suppressor settings, but uh, they're there. And setting one, not only can I shoot extremely flat uh, LARPing on the flat range, but it's a great host for suppressors on setting one. If it gets dirty, gets a little adverse, you can click it over to three. You definitely feel more punch, but it's dead on balls reliable at that point. Uh, I think you're going to find today when you shoot it, it's extremely soft shooting. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's a musket. Oh yeah. No, I've been I've been waiting to shoot one of these. I've been wanting to see what these are all about for a long time. Let me know what that trigger do though. Turn on the, uh, there we go. We'll turn on the optic there. It may or may not be zero. Ah, we're good. 
whoa, whoa, how flat is that? Oh my god. <laughs> way too flat fast man that is so flat shooting man oh. and my favorite thing about Zastavas today is the aftermarket has exploded mm -hmm. you probably couldn't do a lot of the things that you see here on a Yugo five years ago yep. J-Max making stock adapters I've got a SIG uh, MCX stock on here we have an ALG trigger highly polished uh, tango down grip we have an RS regulate AK 307 MS optic mount with uh, MRO Cover Custom Cheese Grater. We have some Balkan Warwood with uh, some trench art. Looks Very nice. cool. Yeah, it looks nice. And the J-Mac four chamber brake. And uh, that's it, man. Huge aftermarket support for these things. A lot of people will say when you buy a Yugo, it's gonna hurt upgrading it because the AKM aftermarket is like, you know, usually what you're gonna find. Yeah. This yep. has easily become one of my favorite AKs and one of the most affordable. I think these things are like 1300 bucks new. Yep. Yep. So uh, I love it. I get more requests to make more videos about this gun than anything in my safe right now. That's good. So yeah, man, that's looks my good. first one. Yeah, it looks good. Uh, you can definitely tell that it is uh, a bit different than a lot of the other AKs that we have here. Um, and it's a little bit beefier, you know? Beefier, uh, longer hand guards with three vents instead of two. Yeah, gives you a little bit more space with your hand, so. You can really cost a grip that thing. Yes. <laughs> Totally could. <laughs> right on. All right, cool. What's the next one? This one This one has always piqued my interest. This is, I would say, a modern day collectible. This is a Polish Beryl. Uh, I would fail if I tried to give you all of the history on this thing. I would throw you at Misha Coach's channel. He's got some great videos absolutely, on this. Absolutely. But what I can tell you is the Beryl came out of um, the Iron Curtain falling. Poland got out. Uh, from beneath the Iron Curtain. Uh, they wanted to do their own thing. They didn't want to do 545 anymore. So the old Polish Tantals were eventually phased out. And you saw a very similar rifle to a Beryl. The, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, yeah, you see now a very similar rifle to the old Tantals, the Beryl, in a NATO chambering. And this actually is serving for a NATO country. Yeah. This is a real deal NATO AK. Uh, we have another 18-inch barrel. Mm. And this is where it gets weird. This is unlike any other AK that you're going to find out there. Everything on here is extremely proprietary, so modding it is a problem. A muzzle brake that is locked tight and in place. Yep. You have a sight block that is not up against your muzzle device as you're used to on AKMs. It's like halfway down the barrel with a bayo lug. You have a 90 degree gas block. The handguards are totally unique to Polish guns. The handguard retainer is one solid piece, so you can't swap out handguards. Only Polish furniture will fit on Polish guns. We have a huge mag paddle. Oh yeah. Very yeah. generous. Yep. You have an enhanced safety from factory. That's awesome. Totally yeah. factory. Mm -hmm. uh, this is probably going to cause some questions. Uh, there's no sight rail. There's no way to put like an RS Regulate mount on this. You're not going to find an Ultimac for one of these. They don't make them. So you'll notice on Polish guns, they actually have these little cuts in the sight block. And they have like a little nipple that protrudes on your stock. And if you go to AOA or another surplus site, you can find these snap-on... Uh, Weaver mounts and pick mounts. Uh, this is all the same thing that you will see in the Polish NATO military. Mm. This is all military grade stuff. And you can adopt modern optics, a bit of a chin weld, but what's so cool about this is, this is a real NATO AK that you can buy today. Yeah. The fit and finish on this thing is beautiful. It is gorgeous. Biggest downside is, you can't really do any aftermarket to mm -hmm. it. You're kind of stuck with it. So I would say modern day collectible, dude. I yeah. wouldn't change a thing on this. We even took out the Fime trigger and found a real Barrel trigger to put back in it. Oh, nice. And make it like yeah. bone stock. Yeah. And it's a cool shooter, dude. Mm. The question is, I mean, realistically, is there a lot of, you know, upgrades that you would need to do with this, you know? Hey, it's working for them. I there mean, you go. I would probably put the collapsible Polish Archer stock. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's cool. The Archer stock gives you a worse chin weld, but it looks cool. Yeah. So for you guys that really like military grade weapons, man, uh, this is as close to, this is all you can really get to have a real deal NATO AK. Mm -hmm. yep. And not just saying that, it is a real deal NATO AK. And it looks dope. And these are still available right now. Mm -hmm. They haven't left the market yet. Yeah. I think these trade for around 15 to 1600. With the pedigree that it has, I think that's a steal. Yeah. 
They will double in price when they go away. Absolutely. We're good. <laughs> that goes too quick, too quick. And then the last one, you've done a, a really awesome video on, uh, and this is kind of, this is your... Uh, this is my dream guy. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I didn't want to put words in your mouth, but uh, yeah, and, and I, can, I can definitely see why. I've already put a couple of rounds through it, just like five rounds through it, and I can immediately tell the difference. On, on this guy right here. So a lot of people are used to the current imports, the SAM-5, yeah. a milled 5.56 AK. This predates the SAM-5 by 20 plus years. Uh, what this was in the late 90s, early 2000s, uh, there was a guy, uh, Tommy Bilt, that was building a lot of kits back then. This is before even anyone knew who Jim Fuller was or a lot of these guys that we cherish today. Uh, this came in the country as an SLR 100H 762 Bulgarian milled receiver. Uh, converted to run with a 5.56 Bulgarian kit, factory barrel, everything on here is totally 100% Bulgarian, but it was built at the end of the ban, mm. the assault weapons ban. So it would have had a permanently affixed muzzle brake. There is no bay bayonet lug. You can see the wings are gone. Other than that, you cannot tell this is a ban era gun. It has all the other features, so I'm not sure how they legally sold this that way with just <laughs> a couple of features being deleted. Right. So it's not a SAM-5. There were only about 250 of these things made. And what's that serial number say? That serial number says 251. Uh, after talking to uh, Gordon, we thought this was the second to last. This is actually the last one produced. Oh, really? With one serialized prototype. 251 is the last. Oh, my. And we goodness. found this randomly at a gun show, or a guy found it for me in New Mexico. We paid a little over $700 for this thing, <laughs> which is why it's covered in stickers and all this dumb <laughs> stuff, because I'm not afraid. Bro, I've wanted a milled 556 AK for years. The Sam 5s, I can't afford. I cannot afford. <laughs> and uh, this thing fell into my lap, right place, right time. I had the cash, and a viewer reached out and said, dude, I will have this guy call you. I don't want you to miss this opportunity. Yep. You viewers are stinking awesome. Because of you guys, I got my dream gun. Yeah. And the aftermarket stuff on this dude, we have a JMAC brake that can support a Wolverine PBS-1 suppressor. We have a K&S piston that, as you know, makes this thing shoot like a friggin' Cadillac. Mm -hmm. No optic rail, so we had to put a master mount on there. It just bolts to your trigger pins. We have an RS Regulate mount with an SRO with a Jaeger Works shield, a fully tuned ALG trigger, some goon tape on that, Tango down mount, and all my friend stickers <laughs> on the stock. Because awesome. stock options don't really exist for milled AKs, unfortunately. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And that's actually really cool, and that's what I love about the community so much is Ooh, someone saw something, no they knew, they thought of you first, mm -hmm. and then they're like on the horn trying to get, get in touch with you. That wow. was awesome. I never would have got this gun without viewer support. Yep. Yeah. That is awesome. I pined over these things. These things trade for so much money. I pined. We, we talk about this all the time. I remember when Sam 5s came in the country one time, a batch of 500, and then they disappeared for years before they recently came back. So it was either those or these extremely rare K101s that you had to deban. Yeah. And I just thought, you know what? I'll never have a 5.56 AK milled. I'll never get one. And finally, dude, we got one. Smooth, flat shooting, heavy, soaks up recoil. And it's got a story to it. Yeah, oh yeah. My favorite yeah. gun that I own. Yeah, and those are the those are always the best ones, man. That you always have a story for. So, uh, but yeah, these these have all been uh, a lot of fun to shoot, um, and I just no flash. Which being able to see weird. a lot of this, uh, a lot of these rifles become more and more popular. Uh, especially in 5.56 is really really cool you know just that last idea. year I was able to uh, build a 5.45 and that's mm -hmm. super cool but man ammo and prices so right cool. now with 5.45 is uh, kind of making it prohibitive to shoot yeah but you can find 5.56223 pretty much anywhere and shoot it on the cheap in some cases so you make a great point dude 
Uh, don't get me wrong, I love 74s. There's mm -hmm. nothing like it. There's yeah. nothing like 545. I love shooting AKs more than being dedicated to a round. I'm so terrified of 545 being gone and not having some NATO AKs to still be able to get my AK fix. Yep. This ensures that no matter what happens, we have no control over ammo bands and everything else. I can still take my AKs to the range, even if I have to buy expensive steel case or expensive brass case 223, the ammo will always be there in the US. Yep. I don't have to put this on the wall and go, man, that was cool when I got to shoot it 10 years ago. Yep. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So smooth, so light recoiling. That KNS piston in there really makes a difference. Gotta get one. Alright, so uh, there is uh, Clay's choices for his favorite 556 AKs. And uh, if you want to see what I brought, you're going to have to go over to Clay's channel and check that out. There will be a link to it in the pinned comment and in the description so you guys can find it really easy. And uh, this has been a lot of fun. This yeah. has been awesome, especially being able to hush these things up a little bit. It's been a lot of fun too. So. I would love for you to uh, shoot each of them a little bit. And then uh, to close out this video, we'll do this on both videos. I brought some other Gucci 556 AK variants that stray away from the uh, typical AK pattern. Right on. They go real quick. Yep. And I was hoping you might be able to shoot those for your viewers today. Absolutely, absolutely, we'll do that. So Mark, what we have here for your enjoying pleasure uh, this is a departure from the Valmet uh, with a little FAL touch. This is the Israeli's best effort at a NATO AK milled receiver. You'll notice you're going to see your Valmet sights very close anyway Hell with the yeah. FAL stock. Milled receiver, the maglatch and uh, maglatch guard are virtually unchanged from the Valmet. Grip angle is about the same. Even the upswept contour on the receiver is exactly the same from the Valmet. Get a little uh, one time love here. Goes way too quick. <laughs> oh, I'm in love. I'm in love. So, Mark, uh, you might not see this and think AK. This is a Swiss 550 series. Yeah. If you were to take the bolt and carrier out, it looks like it came right out of an AK. Multi lug lockup, uh, long stroke gas piston. This thing was heavily inspired by the AK operating system. Some would say this is the Swiss watch of the AK world. Granted, it's built on an American upper Swiss lower. I digress. It go quick. It go quick. Ah, uh, man, this is a treat in itself. Uh, you get uh, you get the Valmet, I get this. You actually have a bolt hold open on the right side. I'm sorry, the left side. Or you could do that. It's got all sort of flappy paddles and buttons like that. Yeah, yeah. Nice. So I would urge you to give three round a try. Yep. And then maybe go full turbo. Okay. Let me give a uh, one round just to understand what I'm looking at. This is a treat. When it's painted up, dude, that's going to be my favorite. All right, there you go, uh, Clay. You and 
Rachel have been so awesome to have me down here. You're, hosp you're just so hospitable and uh, I've had a great time. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for allowing me to come out at play with your guns, play with your super fast stuff, and uh, just have a great, great time. Uh, Kalash Bash is coming up. I'm super stoked for that. Uh, there's still probably some tickets left, depending on when this drops, but uh, if you can get in, you guys gotta get in on this, man. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get out of here. Thank you guys so much. Uh, if you guys are interested in checking out uh, the rest of this video, like I said, head on over to Clay's channel. Uh, link is pinned in the first comment or in the description and i really do appreciate you guys as always freedom through strength and we'll catch you guys next time <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, one take Jake over here. Yeah. One take Jake. Love it.